Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our, our April LEA Special Education Point of Contact webinar. A downloadable PDF version of this presentation is available under the handouts drop down. Be sure to download a copy to jot down key information. We'll give folks a few more moments to log in and then we'll go ahead and get started. All right, again, good morning. Thank you for joining us for our April LEA Special Education Points of Contact webinar. My name is LaShonda Wilson and I'm your host. I'm an Education Program Specialist uh, on the IDEA Monitoring Team here at OSSI. Our collaborative team is proud to bring you this monthly webinar series um, as we support you in carrying out the important work of serving our students with disabilities in the District of Columbia. Today we'll be covering an array of topics. Uh, we'll cover policy reminders and updates, our IDEA monitoring reminders and updates, teaching and learning reminders and updates, non-public reminders and updates, uh, special populations assessments reminders and updates, transportation reminders and updates, power school special programs reminders and updates, and we'll close out today with general reminders and announcements. Okay, again, thank you for joining us this morning. We are winding down on this webinar series as the 2022-2023 school year beckons to a close in the coming months. A lot of the information today pertains, I'm sorry, just exactly to that uh, in terms of preparation. Next month will be our final series for this school year. So be sure to stay tuned for this and other information as we prepare for the final webinar of this series. And with that, I will pass it over now to Christy Weaver-Harris for our policy reminders and updates. Good morning, everybody. This is Christy Weaver-Harris. I'm a policy manager in the Office of Special Education. I'm gonna go over some things uh, today related to ESY, uh, end of school year, start of school year, and some training information. Next slide, please. So as it is ESY season, today's chapter 30, did you know, is about ESY eligibility. Um, in determining ESY eligibility, the IEP team will consider the impact of the break in service on the student's critical skills, the likelihood and degree of regression related to critical skills, and the time required for recruitment. So in doing this, IEP teams are required to use at least three months of progress monitoring data to make that determination. 
we've heard that some LEAs are unable to make timely ESY eligibility determinations. And by timely, I mean um, consistent with the ESY certification deadline. Um, but we've heard that you, some folks have been having trouble with that. Um, so I did want to remind you, oh, because you're waiting on student data. There's some folks who are waiting on, on student data. That's why they're not having them timely. Um, but I did want to remind you that if you don't have three months of progress monitoring data, you can use any relevant current data or information that you have available to you. That's going to be especially important for students who are new to your LEA or students who are transitioning from IDA Part C for whom you don't have three months of progress monitoring data. So those students may also need ESY. So just as a reminder, if you don't have three months, use what you have that is available to you. Next slide, please. Um, and again, related to ESY, Monday, May 1, is the deadline for ESY certification for this year. So this process assists OSSE, LEAs, and non-public programs with planning for the summer months and assists OSSE with um, anticipating state-level expenses and being able to accommodate transportation needs. Uh, ESY certification includes completing ESY eligibility determinations and SEDs, completing ESY-related transportation eligibility determinations also in SEDs, and submitting data to OSSE um, based on your calendars, your uh, TRFs, all sorts of different information that goes to different um, data systems. Next slide, please. So here's a list of the specific activities that each LEA must complete and the due dates associated with those tasks. Um, this same chart is being shared with LEA leaders um, last month and this month in the LEA leaders meeting. So you may hear from folks in your LEA about these tasks. This is the exact same slide that they are going to see. Everyone has access to the same information. Um, so note that some of these tasks have to be completed before others. For example, student eligibilities have to be completed in SEDS one day before the student will appear in IDS. So you can't submit the TRF for for one day you have to allow the system to, to refresh overnight. Um, and other folks on your team may be responsible for completing some of these tasks. So make sure that you're collaborating with folks like your LEA data manager to make sure these things are getting done. Because it's usually like your LEA data manager that's going to enter your ESY calendars or give access to folks, things like that. Um, so if you have any questions about this, you can feel free to reach out to me. We also did, um, we released a 2023 ESY preparation guide that was emailed to special education points of contact, head of school transportation points of contact. Um, so I can drop a link to that in the chat when I'm done, but uh, please refer to that preparation guide for more information too. Next slide. All right, on April 26th of this year, the Early Access to Students with Disabilities data application should go live with student information for the upcoming 23-24 school year. Uh, so Early Access is a click application that OSSE provides to give LEAs access to information on pre-enrolled students with disabilities, so it's stage four enrolled students. Um, and this is prior to when you get access to students directly in the system, so like in what will be Power School Special Programs, um, when the systems switch over in August, usually around August. Um, so we give access to a lot of types of POCs to this application. But if you have questions about getting access to the Click application, your best bet is to start with your LEA data manager to make sure that you are designated as the right POC. And I think this says eSchool Plus points of contact. I think it's IDS points of contact is where we pull from now. Next slide, please. So the early access application provides a ton of information that we pull both from SLED and SEDS, um, and it's intended to help with planning for the upcoming school year. This slide shows an overview of what's available in the application, which you can also filter and manipulate to meet your needs. You can use this data to help inform decisions around staffing, um, assigning classroom and cohorts, uh, training needs, identifying students for whom you're going to need to submit a TRF as soon as you have access to that student, calendar and meetings, all sorts of planning. Um, and as a reminder, you can download from the system, from the Click application, um, Excel spreadsheets of this data. And if you are downloading that data, you must delete them on a regular basis. Um, rosters and important student information in the system are updated daily. So sometimes that enrollment information or that student information can change. So you wanna make sure that you're deleting out those, uh, those prior downloads because you may not have, you, may, you should not be able to access those students at all times. So if a student who is in your LEA moves to another LEA, you wanna make sure you're deleting that old data. Next slide, please. So as we are coming up on the end of the school year, 
um, I want to go over some tips for preparing to close out the current school year and prepare for the upcoming school year. Um, I think we're all excited to be planning for the transition to power school special programs, including uh, downloading information that you may need during zero week, preparing to document things in writing during your zero week, and planning for staff to complete training on the new system. Um, if you haven't done so already, make sure that you've completed compensatory services decisions related to COVID-19. I know most folks completed those last year. Just a reminder to make sure that you've done this for, for students as appropriate. Um, complete reevaluations and meetings that may be due over the summer. This could especially be true for students who have transferred into your LEA where their processes or documents don't follow your LEA's calendar. So keep an eye on students who have things coming up due during the summer and try and get them done before folks are out of the building. Um, complete all of your documentation in SEDS, especially as we prepare to transition to special programs, um, including service logs, service trackers, progress reports, PWNs. Complete the summary of performance for students who are graduating. If you don't complete that summary of performance and then you ask OSSI to exit that student and there's no summary of performance, you know in, that the OST ticket is going to come back and say this student doesn't have a summary of performance. So make sure you're completing those before folks are out of the building. Um, and finally, you want to make sure that you're identifying POCs to handle things over the summer. I know many LEAs have staff that are 10 month employees, but there are still some things that LEAs at, at, in the larger context of an LEA are responsible for during the summer, like responding to records requests and participating in transition activities for students who are transitioning from Part C. So make sure you're planning ahead for that. Make sure there's somebody around to be able to respond and handle those responsibilities. Next slide. Um, and to get ready for the next school year, make sure you are timely submitting TRFs or have a process in place to complete TRFs when the systems switch over. We know that there's you'll come back for the next school year and have some new kiddos on your roster. Check to see who those students are in early access and have a plan in place for submitting TRFs as soon as you have access to those students. Um, and again, use the early access application to monitor student enrollments. Um, we are asking LEAs to conduct an audit of their SEDS users and I would also say IDS contacts. Um, for IDS, we use those user roles for a variety of things. Like when we send mass emails, we pull the POC lists from IDS. And when I, like for the ESY uh, memo that we sent out this year, I emailed like 700 people and got over 100 kickbacks. So it's 100 people that shouldn't have received an email. Make sure you're cleaning out those, um, those users. Uh, especially for SEDS, it's going to be important because we're going to be checking to see um, at the LEA level, how many folks have been trained on the new system based on where how many people you have in SEDS now. Um, you're probably going to need to work with your LEA data manager on that. Um, again, make sure you have plans for folks to complete training on the new power school special programs. I think Rita is going to give some more information about that later. Um, and uh, keep an eye out for other startup school trainings. We're not going to do a big summit uh, like we used to, but there are quite a few trainings across divisions at OSSI. And finally, be preparing to document the first provision of specialized instructions for students with disabilities under the age of six. You know we're going to be reaching out to you about that um, in PowerSchool Special Programs. It is a much simpler process. Um, so we'll have some training and some information on that once that part of the system is done. Um, but be preparing for that for the upcoming school year to make sure that you're documenting that first provision of specialized instruction in a timely manner. Next slide. All right, so again, OSSI is providing um, in-person training for certification in the MANT system. Uh, under the new, newish Chapter 30 regulations, um, anyone who applies a restraint must be trained in a formal training process. It must be trained and certified. Um, so to support LEAs in ensuring um, appropriate staff training, we're hosting these trainings um, with a vendor. Uh, we have some new dates that were just added to this Chapter 30 resources page yesterday. We have some upcoming trainings in the next couple of weeks and then across the summer. Um, I'll drop a link to, in, the, in the chat to those trainings too so you can get registered. This year we're also offering the opportunity to host trainings at your school building. I've gotten a few emails from folks about this, but if you are interested, please reach out to me or Monica Rizzo on my team. If you have emailed me about this and you haven't heard back from me, email me again. I went through yesterday to make sure that I responded to everybody, but just in case I missed someone. Um, so that's a great opportunity that we are offering this summer. I don't have a slide on this, but I want to give you guys a heads up that we're also going to be offering a paraprofessionals training series um, in the spring and then again like at the end of summer right around back to school. 
Uh, so keep an eye out uh, for information on that. Uh, if you have any questions about anything I've gone over today, please drop them in the chat. We'll go over them at the end of the webinar, but I'll be keeping an eye on the chat and I will drop links to the chapter 30 trainings and the ESY um, preparation guide in the chat in the next couple of minutes. Awesome, thank you, Christy. I'll turn it over now to Dawn Hilson and Karen Morgan Donaldson for our IDEA monitoring reminders and updates. Okay, next slide, please. Good morning. Um, my name is Dawn Hilton and I am the 619 coordinator. Um, today, I would like to begin our conversation with child outcome summary exit data. LEA is providing early childhood special education services should begin gathering cost exit data and submitting that data into DC CATS. As a reminder, cost measures the progress a child makes in his or her preschool and or pre-K special education program. Exit scores are required for any child who will be promoted to kindergarten, turned age six during the school year, no longer is eligible for special education services or has moved out of state, um, is currently receiving home or is being homeschooled or attends a private school. So those are the children who will need um, exit data submitted and costs. Next slide, please. ASI also completed the review of cost data gathered during the January checkpoint. LEAs were notified via email of noted discrepancies with data submission. For those LEAs that were notified, an Excel spreadsheet has been uploaded in your LEA's cost folder in OSI box. Please review your spreadsheet and submit all requested actions in DC CATS by um, 5 p.m. PM on Friday, May 19th. Next slide, please. And then um, lastly, the early childhood special education referral transfer process is beginning soon. Um, with the acceptance of lottery seats and the completion of My School DC registration process, LEAs will begin to receive new and active referrals to special education for our youngest learners around May 1st. Both strong start and early stages will confirm a child's enrollment with OSI and then send LEAs notification of the referrals. OSI will grant LEAs access to a child's SEDS record prior to the SIS switchover for the 2023-24 school year. For assistance with gathering, or I'm sorry, for assistance with gaining access to a child's record, you may submit an OST ticket. If you need additional assistance, please contact me at the email address provided on the slide. And I'll now turn this over to Karen. Thank you, Don. Good morning, everybody. This is Karen Morgan Donaldson um, from IDEA Monitoring and Compliance. And I have a few slides um, just with some monitoring updates for the remainder of the year. Um, this slide should look familiar and provides information about what compliance reports are currently in open are open in DC CATS. If you are unsure of the status of your LEA's reports in DC CATS, um, please reach out to your L LEA IDEA monitor, Deborah Melville. And our next slide provides some information on monitoring that is taking place now or upcoming monitoring. So this slide provides um, information about secondary transition and reevaluation timeliness monitoring, which is all taking place right now. Um, the time period being monitored in these areas are quarter two and quarter three which is October 1st, 2022 to March 30th, 2023. So what does this mean for your LEA? It means that any secondary transition plans that were created or written during that time may be pulled as part of the sample for secondary transition for reevaluation. It means that any untimely reevaluations during that time period will be flagged. So if you have any questions about this monitoring, uh, these monitoring activities, please reach out to me or Deborah Melville. 
in addition here, um, we will be monitoring for C to B timeliness um, or also called indicator 12 in August. Um, I will be providing more information on that uh, monitoring activity in our next monthly webinar. So our next slide provides next steps for LEAs. So these are some key next steps that you should take. Um, and the first one is to monitor your email for notifications from DC CATS about an initial report release. DC CATS sends an automated email to all DC CATS users um, that um, have, have reports um, you know, tied to their LEA. So please keep a lookout for that automated um, email from DC CATS. Please check your spam. In addition, um, we also send out um, an additional email notification just as a heads up. So you will be receiving two emails um, about um, you know, when the initial report in DC CATS is released. So at that point, you should log into DC CATS and we are asking you to, during the 30-day correction window, review your LEA's initial reports in secondary transition and reevaluation. So make any and all appropriate corrections to secondary transition files that were not marked non-compliant, if appropriate. And then we are also asking you to validate your LEA's reevaluation data. And in our next slide, I'll be showing you an example of what that will look like. This should look familiar. Um, so validating your reevaluation re data in DC CATS is really just giving you the opportunity to provide us with the reason why the, the reevaluation was untimely. So if it was an LEA delay, if it was something that was related to, um, you know, you didn't have, you just didn't hold it on time because of staffing, whatever it might be. LEA delay, student no longer enrolled at the LEA, and parental delay, these two key reasons. So if, if you put student no longer enrolled at the LEA, that means you can't correct that at the student level, and it will automatically go on to a prong two. If you can provide evidence that it was parental delay, then you will not receive a finding. Again, the evidence is three, um, three modalities, um, and it's the same as, um, it, it's the same that we look for for parental delay. And then COVID-19 delay, this is the key point for this slide today, is we will no longer be accepting COVID-19 delay. You will see this option in DC CATS. If you click on that, we will not be accepting that. And we will just send it right back to you. And then of course, if you feel like a, um, a reevaluation file was flagged incorrectly, it was a, a data error, you can always request for an appeal and we will review any supporting documentation that you provide. Okay, and that's it for me. If you have any questions related to these monitoring activities, whether past or present or upcoming, go ahead and email me or you can also put it in the questions um, tab of GoToWebinar. Thank you. Thanks, Dawn, and thank you, Karen. I'll turn it over now to Biol Yim for our teaching and learning reminders and updates. Good morning, everyone. This is Biol Yim, Training and Technical Assistance Specialist for a Special Education in the Division of Teaching and Learning. I have a couple of announcements to share. I will share the link to the registrations and um, the websites that I mentioned once I complete my section in the chat box. Uh, next slide, please. The first announcement is Multi-Tier System of Supports Community of Practice, MTSS COP, has been going on and has upcoming sessions monthly through June of this year. It is a great way to learn and grow with other educators. And for those LEA-based educators, you can build a community and improve and maintain the systems you have through problem of practice and review of resources. Um, you can find registration in the chat box. I, like I mentioned, I will share the uh, registration once I finish. And there will be another one in May and we would love you to um, join. If you have any questions, you can reach out to Angela Awanaki for support. Uh, next slide, please. 
OSSI continues to offer dyslexia awareness training as a part of DC Law 23191, Addressing Dyslexia and Other Reading Difficulties Amendment Act of 2020. As a part of that, we are offering three-part dyslexia awareness training course. We're strongly encouraging all educators serving K-12 through to take the course. It is available in our new learning management system, and those who complete will earn up to 16 professional learning units, which count towards recertification of teaching license. I will also drop the link in the chat box for this opportunity as well. Next slide, please. And don't forget to subscribe to Aussie Teaching and Learning Bulletin. All DC educators are encouraged to subscribe to the monthly TEL PD Bulletin to stay informed of upcoming Aussie offered PD sessions, resources, and tips from fellow educators. And um, I will share the link in the chat box as well. Next slide, please. All right. Our foundations of special education skill building opportunities are still available. As you can see, taking the four courses within the Foundations of Special Education course suite will allow you to earn up to 32 professional learning units, as well as to earn two micro-credentials. I can't stress enough for those who are pre-K to grade 12 educators serving at DC Public and DC Public Charter Schools who currently have an active DC Standard credential please do consider taking the additional path which can afford you the opportunity to obtain an endorsement in special education as well as this as soon as this summer and earn incentive pay up to fifteen hundred dollars there is so much support for this course and you can learn the foundations and fundamentals of special education and serving students with disabilities next slide please And this is a quick overview of the course. Once you join, you will have access to readings, recorded webinars, quizzes and assignments, as well as additional resources, um, learning about foundations of special education. There are four courses within the suite of foundations of special education, as I mentioned, and each course is worth eight professional learning unit and would require about eight to 10 hours of your time. Special education praxis and endorsement application fee will be covered as well. And I will pop a link for the information page for more information. And please do share with anyone who may be interested in the opportunities. And we had our very first community of practice last month and we'll be holding another one in May after the park season. Um, it was a great time of engagement and learning opportunities amongst fellow DC educators. Thank you. Thank you so much, Buell. We'll now hear from Katie Rita for our non-public reminders and updates. Hi, good morning, everyone. Katie Rita, Special Programs Manager, um, here just to give you a couple of contact reminders regarding non-public school support. Next slide, please. Um, so as you can see in the slides, I bulleted out different topic areas and who you should contact regarding any support you need for your students who are attending non-public schools. Um, so some quick summaries um, for um, any questions about change in placement, LRE, continuum, service locations, um, out-of-state placements made by other agencies like students attending RTCs or PRTFs in another state, or if you're just really unclear about what the issue is or who you should contact at Aussie about the issue regarding a student in a non-public school, please feel free to contact me directly. Um, if you have questions about non-public school certificate of approval monitoring, your contact is still Sharon Powell. Um, for any IDEA compliance questions for your students attending non-public schools, please reach out to your Aussie IDA monitoring point of contact. They'll be your point of contact for all questions about IDA compliance. That includes things regarding IEPs, reavals, anything related to IDA compliance. Um, or 
questions that you might receive from non-public schools about funding. Um, you have a new point of contact, please have your non-public schools reach out to Tessa Hayden. Um, she is our new funding point of contact. She's in, she's serving as interim in Yvonne Smith's old role. And then if you continue to have questions about SEDS or transportation issues um, regarding students attending non-public schools, please continue to submit an OST ticket to get those issues re um, resolved. So not too many changes, um, but just wanted to put some reminders in there to make sure our LEAs know who they should contact for any sort of non-public school support. Um, hope everyone has a great rest of your week. Thanks, LaShonda. Thank you, Katie. Awesome. We'll have a few updates now, uh, special populations, assessments, reminders, and updates from Asad. Asad? Yes, thank you so much, LaShonda. Thank you. I'm not able to see the next slide. Okay, there we go. And perfect. So here are the statewide testing windows for the 22-23 school year. Um, please note that the alternate access for L's window has closed and we have about two weeks left to complete MSAA and DLM testing for students with disabilities. Um, next slide. Um, specifically right now, we have been getting test security affidavits in various ways. And so because um, our test security affidavits don't have any, um, you know, personal information or like student information, you can email them directly to Lauren Thompson. And this will go for all um, test security affidavits for all of the assessments that are being administered this year. Um, you can email them directly to Lauren Thompson. Next slide. Thank you. Um, for alternate access materials and for field test material returns, here are the deadlines. Um, for access and alternate access, the deadline was April 7th. So anything after that date would be considered late. Um, and for alternate access field test materials, you have about another week left. They're due by next Wednesday. Um, if you need to schedule a UPS pickup, um, please call that number that is listed on the slide at least one day prior to when you plan on shipping or returning your materials. Um, next slide. And so, like I just said, um, late materials count as anything not being shipped back to DRC by the deadlines that were displayed on the previous slide. If you need any support in sending late materials back, um, please contact me at asadfulton at dc.gov. I will be happy to support you in getting, the, getting those materials sent back. For data validation, um, this is an important step in the access um, assessment, a part of the assessment um, window. Um, pre-reporting data validation for win window, the pre-reporting data validation window for LEAs in WIDA AMS is from April 21st to the 28th. Um, very detailed guidance is going to be coming out later on this week via email. Um, and you can also check the Next Generation Assessment or the NGA Bulletin um, for more information as well. Um, in previous, in some of the most recent NGA releases, um, I have highly encouraged data managers and test coordinators to view the post-testing data validation webinar that was held on Tuesday, March 7th, and you can access this if you log into your WIDA Secure portal. Or if you have any um, trouble finding this, some LEAs were not able to access this, I can um, send it to you directly via email if you reach out to me. Next slide. Next is the um, MS, some updates for MSAA. Um, I just wanted to remind any of our test coordinators or administrators that are with us today that um, printed materials should be treated as secure, meaning that they should be um, locked up. They should not be left out or around students when you, the coordinator or um, administrator are not there. Um, you can submit an OST ticket for incidents and RC will follow for testing incidents and RC will follow up. Um, any discrepancies in the MSAA platform that need correction that have student data, 
would need an OST ticket. If not, you can email me directly and I can try to troubleshoot or provide you with some guidance or support that way. And then the next slide is a reminder that I am recruiting for an item review committee for MSAA. Um, we are, um, it will take place in Salt Lake City um, June, June 12th through the 16th. It is all expenses covered. Um, so it's a great opportunity for anyone in the special education world that has experience with special education or with the MSAA assessment to provide their knowledge, background, and experience for this review. Um, we will be reviewing um, items for the um, school year 24 assessment for questions that will be on there. So I would love it if you all would complete the form that's in the um, that's listed in the slide if you are interested. Um, the sooner the better, and I can provide you with any information that you are looking to know if you reach out to me via email. Um, and that is it on special populations assessment updates. Thank you, Asai. Thank you, Lashonda. Awesome. Now I'll turn it over now to Rita Larkins for transportation reminders and updates, uh, which will be immediately followed by Power School Special Programs reminders and updates. Rita? Thanks so much, LaShonda. Uh, good morning, everyone. This is Rita Larkins in the Office of CIO. I'm going to be presenting some of the transportation updates for today, as LaShonda mentioned. Um, just to remind everyone, just refresh your memory, just a month ago, uh, OSSI released the enhancements to the Integrated Data Submission Tool, IDS. Um, so that is out and available. Uh, and just as a refresher, some of those enhancements consist of the ability to update individual student records, uh, transfer students between schools within your LEA during the next school year transition, um, also the ability to submit LEA and school calendar details, um, validation checks against authoritative data sources, and some key metrics for managing student submissions. If you have not, uh, I definitely invite you to do so is to register at the OSSI training registration site for that IDS uh, transportation tool request training uh, is available there. Uh, in the next slide, we just talked very briefly about some of those calendar submissions. Um, and as you know, uh, OSSI is utilizing the um, LEA school and in information. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's utilizing the LEA school and in information. Um, management system SLIMS and uh, also eSchool Plus. Um, and this is to reduce the data entry burden on LEAs. So within the calendar module, LEAs will have the ability to indicate their inclement weather jurisdiction, uh, create a single calendar, and also copy calendars across multiple schools. Uh, and just to um, point out some of those elements that are in SLIMS or are in eSchool Plus, uh, like your school name and school code, those primary things about the LEA, the address, principal, and grades offered, all this data source for those are SLIMS. Uh, for things like your first day of school, non-instructional days, calendar-related um, elements, those are found in eSchool Plus. Uh, and then the next slide just kind of gives you more of those same elements uh, and where you're able to find them. Uh, if you have questions about this, uh, if you're still a little confused about how all this works, definitely register for one of the training sessions on the OSSI training registration calendar. In our next slide, we will be talking about uh, the Power School Special Programs Reminders and Updates. And um, thank you all for joining us for our last uh, demo. We are about to start kicking off the training. So I know that many folks have already begun registering for trainings, which began on April 24th. So um, staff are encouraged to enroll for these trainings, but we really wanna make sure the right people are registering 
for the correct trainings. So for our LEA data administrators and help desk staff, and also the special education coordinators, please be sure to thoroughly read the descriptions to ensure you are registered for the correct course. Uh, I would be remiss if I did not mention, we will be hosting another um, demo today at one o'clock. Uh, today's demo will focus on the reporting functionality in special programs. So if you haven't already registered at that same site, you can register for training, you can register for the demo. Um, we sent out the link. Um, now the link does require you to click to come into the um, Microsoft Teams webinar, um, but that is the link that was sent out. I think an email went out this morning just as a reminder with that link so that you all can join it. So if you wanna log in just a few minutes early, make sure that you are in a great spot. Um, we'd appreciate it and we look forward to seeing you this afternoon at the reporting demo. Thanks so much, LaShonda. Thank you, Rita. All right, now for our reminders and announcements. Uh, we'll start first with a couple of Chapter 30 updates. Next slide. There we go. All right, so as you guys know, Chapter 30 went into effect last July 1. Um, just a reminder that we have links to the regulations themselves and some additional resources available on our website. Um, please go to those links, check them out. We have um, information on updated eligibility worksheets. We have some uh, online trainings presented through the GoToWebinar about the regulations themselves. And we also have um, restraint training registration on that website. So please make sure that you're referring to that website frequently. Okay, I'll go ahead and jump in. Next slide. Um, just a quick reminder, special education law training modules that are provided by direct um, by LRP called Direct Step. There are three new courses that are available to LEAs. Um, I will put um, I will put the names of those courses in the chat, um, but they are as follows: um, identifying anxiety, when to evaluate, and determining eligibility under IDEA in Section 504. Co-teaching essentials to maximize educational benefit for students with disabilities, and then avoiding the predetermination trap. Best practices for engaging parents and demonstrating an open mind. So again, these are three new courses. Um, we highly encourage you to go take a look and see the the other courses that have been available um, to see how they can support you and your staff. Next slide. And then just a quick reminder that LRP Special Ed Connection continues to be available um, to, your, to your LEA or all LEAs. Um, if you have any questions about this resource, um, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you. All right, as a reminder, Please join us on Wednesday, May 3rd, for the final Early Childhood Working Group session um, for the 2022-23 school year. The session will focus on summer preparation for our youngest learners. To register for the session, please use the link on, provided on the slide. Um, I also ask that if you have any topic ideas for next year, um, please email me directly at dawn.hilton1 at dc.gov. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Christy, Karen, and Dawn for our announcements. If you happen to miss a webinar, please be sure to visit our LEA SPED POC webinar series section on our webpage. Any previous webinars are posted on the website, and you can download any resource material directly from the site. Uh, also, the webinar and slides will always be posted uh, on that site within one week of the live broadcast. Um, I did notice in our chat, uh, a couple of folks mentioned that there was an issue with our links today. Uh, so I will be sure to um, get on that after this uh, broadcast closes out. Um, you will be able to look for an additional copy of that handout on the webpage. All right, our next and final webinar
for this series is on Wednesday, May 17th, 2023. For anyone wishing to be added, please share the link here. Um, we recognize they may be coming on uh, at the tail end uh, if you're sharing it with your fellow colleagues, um, but be sure to share it anyhow uh, to make sure that they get linked uh, for our next uh, webinar series as we launch for the 2023-2024 school year. Okay, the most important part of this webinar, uh, it's feedback time. <laughs> Take out your phones and with your camera, scan the QR code you see here on the screen. Uh, you can also visit the link that we've listed here for our SurveyMonkey survey. Your feedback is so important to us. Uh, it helps us to ensure that we're meeting your needs, we're, we're providing you with the most uh, important information uh, so that you can carry out the essential functions of your role and responsibilities in serving our students. We'll take a few moments now to review any additional questions in the chat. Uh, Christy, uh, it looks like we have quite a few here today. Um, we do. So we've got a few questions about how can LEAs get updates about the transition to special programs, especially after this webinar ends. So each LEA has a transition team and our uh, CIO team will be sending regular emails, likely monthly, like I've been told monthly, to ensure continued communication with LEAs as well as during the LEA data discussions, which usually they meet twice a month. Um, so you need to be referring to folks internally about that. We will be emailing information to your LEA transition team. Um, so that team has been identified at your LEA and it's, there was an email that was received by LEAs yesterday with the schedule for um, trainings and training descriptions. Um, so that went to your LEA transition team. That's how you're going to be receiving your information about the transition. Um, we also got a few questions about um, how to access previous webinars, which there's a link to that. Um, both in this PowerPoint and also I can drop it in the chat to our recordings. Um, I got a question about the MANT system and if that is the only acceptable uh, restraint system. No, it is not. LEAs are free to identify whatever um, restraint, formal restraint training and certification system works best for your LEA. Um, so MANT is not the only one, it's just the one that OSI is providing. Um, got a question about how to document delays due to um, unavailability of providers, especially for contracted providers, which we know a lot of folks are dealing with this. So that should be documented as an LEA delay. It is the LEA's responsibility to ensure the timely uh, completion of um, evaluations, IPs, all those things. And if a provider that is contracted by the LEA does not meet their, uh, does not meet the timelines provided to them, that is on the LEA. So that's an LEA delay. Um, I uh, got a couple of questions about um, exiting students from SEDS and like how those sorts of processes will change with Power School Special Programs. So for those processes, you want to be referring to the existing guidance that OSI has out there. I would, two big ones come to mind. So the entry and exit guidance, you're going to want to refer to that. And also um, like our enrollment audit guidance. Processes will not change. It's just that the data system is changing, right? So make sure that you're referring to those documents that govern the process when you are looking for information on that, but those processes will not change. I think that's everything. I see a question about um, information about transition. You need to contact folks within your LEA about who they have identified for um, as being on the transition team. I think that's everything. We know that there's some link problems with the with the PowerPoint, we'll take a look at that after the webinar. Absolutely. All right, thank you so much, Christy. Uh, thanks everyone for your uh, awesome questions today. Lots and lots of great questions. Um, we hope we can uh, cover all those for you, or I should say we've covered all those. If for any reason you have additional questions uh, lingering after this webinar, also please don't hesitate to reach out to us. And with that, 
we'd like to thank you for joining us. Uh, also, please again, take a moment uh, to browse the materials in the appendix section of this presentation. Uh, we added a couple of additional materials and we also made updates uh, to some existing materials. Uh, but otherwise, on behalf of our entire coordinating team here, uh, we wanna thank you for joining us today. Uh, we hope everyone has a great afternoon. And again, thanks for joining us. Thanks everybody.